entertainment district, a place of fun and games, crowded streets, beautiful women inviting you to spend time together. What can go wrong? Hello, comrade. My name is Mahis. Come, get yourself a beverage and sit down with me. Also, hands on the table where I can see them. I'd like to cover something first before we take on that question from earlier. Tell me, did you realize how messed up this town is even without demons? We just got ourselves into a place of sex trade, human trafficking, use and abuse of women of an alarming age. Yet, we went in there so matter-of-factly. It's a great way to depict history, reality of that time, but something outrageous for modern days. For example, cut to the last episode where Gyotaro was dreaming about a better life for his sister. He wasn't a merchant, not a farmer, not even a cleaner. It was a higher class prostitute, let's call it the way it is. Yes, I know there is more to it and... For example, an Oiran is well-educated, skilled in all forms of art, and rarely sleep with their customers. But we are looking at the lowest of the low right now. They got it different. They were brought up in such an environment where selling your body in a brothel is considered a dream come true. You got food, shelter, and other necessities. Who cares that you're indebted for life? Not sure about you. But it's very hard for me to relate to many villains because most of them are like cardboard cutouts, flat and one-sided. But I feel for these two, and I can't justify why they did what they did, except for not finishing their opponents, but we'll get back to that later. They were at the bottom of the barrel, but still holding on to their hopes and dreams until they were mercilessly crushed. That's where Muzan comes in, gave him life, kindness and support, and more importantly, Power. Power to pay back those people tenfold for what they've done. What can go wrong? Okay, let's sum it up. This show is about a teenage boy who chose to become a young soldier protecting humanity after his family was brutally murdered. In a world where demons eat everybody with no regard for their age or status, we see workplace misconduct, manipulation, slavery, human trafficking, women treated as objects, sexual abuse, over-sexualization of women, men, and even minors, blood, gore, mutilation, social injustice, human cruelty, misery... This is not a story about demon slayers. It's a tragic tale of a group of people dealing with the consequence of society they live in. We turned them into demons. We did. Muzan just happened to expedite the process. I'm telling you, cut the comedic relief, get DC to reshape this arc, and you will see this story in a new light. Well, if you can see anything at all. Speaking of light, let's move away from doom and gloom and tackle what the show is masking this mess with. Astounding visuals. I know this horse is very much alive, but I'll still beat it and say, damn it, this place is pretty. Memorable, colorful, flashy, just like our next Hashira, Mr. Uzui, dual wielding tall badass. He was first shown as a goofball, but as time went on, we've seen a more competent side of him, and eventually even I liked him. However, his introduction was very strange, and I know what you're going to say, but... Why did he grab only two girls when he had three wives to rescue? Seriously, what was his plan if a squad didn't pull up on time? He took a kid whose age is in single digits to send her into a brothel to investigate. Okay, I understand Aoi, she's an ex-demon slayer and may provide reconnaissance, but we are dealing with a demon who potentially snatched three trained Kunoichis. There is no room for error. Okay, I cannot not comment on the three wives thing. If four responsible adults love each other and decide to live together, let them do the thing. But if you're a man in this situation, I'm speaking from that perspective for obvious reasons, you will have to put up with this nonsense 24-7. It may seem like a cool idea to you, my friend, but I bet my last instant noodle pack that this is a special kind of hell. Moving on to infiltration, I legitimately forgot that a Nosuke looks like a Disney princess, so he's a pass, barely. But how on earth did these guys get in? Look at how shredded they got! If your arms are as thick as your legs, shoulders twice as wide as your hips, and your neck should be way thicker too, it would be painfully obvious to even an ordinary human that these are not teenage girls. But those guys are in this trade. They should spot everything right away. Inosuke's beauty was recognized even under the makeup. Also, that one Oiran who recognized Tanjiro as a dude. She has even seen his hands, which at this point are as good as sandpaper. Moreover, they didn't stay there overnight. 
So they have never been undressed to be evaluated on their assets, have never taken a bath. We did get to see cool quirks of our boys though, I like that. Inosuke turned out to be a sneaky snack. Zenitsu has this Dragon Force energy and Tanjiro, well, is Tanjiro. I'm happy to see character development, especially that Zenitsu scene with Daki. This entire arc Zenitsu is what I wanted him to be in the Mugen Train. Here's a link to where I talk about that. Also, if you've made it this far, consider subscribing for more upcoming videos. He still has his annoying moments, but I swear we've seen him being more badass than a nuisance. <laughs> Inosuke did some weird shit too, but don't get me fucking started on how biology works. So, moving on to Tanjiro, who was pulling an Ichigo and persevering no matter what, which is fine, I guess, because yay, don't give up and push forward and all. But then there is Nezuko, and I know I'm going to get hated for this, but that was a Black Clover level ass pull. We know she can increase in size to increase her strength, but where did this Pokemon evolution come from? Okay, when her Blood Demon art kicked in, it was a stressful and life or death situation, and it's similar right now, but she doesn't eat when she clearly wants to. Where did she get that strength from, that regeneration, to get Ducky's thick, very attractive ass handed to her? If Muzan had favorites, it's freaking Nezuko. You can argue that that Berserk mode was her true demon form, which was suppressed all this time by combined efforts of Urakadaki, Tanjiro and one Bambui boy, but still, the amount of juice Muzan had to give her would be colossal. And that only showed up like, what, three years later? Jesus, can we fucking explain something? And Jesus is precisely what I need after this scene, because Lord knows I've been running around my house swearing like a Scottish seaman for way longer than I want to admit. Why are they still alive? The amount of plot armor these characters have are immeasurable. They were completely out, barely alive, demons have just used so much energy and are no doubt hungry as hell, on top of the fact that they had clear instructions from Muzan to kill on sight Tanjiro and Hashira. On top of that, they barely survived themselves. Also, don't forget, we kept getting reinforcements. Tanjiro was fighting solo, then Nezuko, then Flashy Trio, then Kunoichi. There is no guarantees nobody else is showing up. Kill and eat them immediately, what are you waiting for? And then you give me this as an answer? And I did not forget about how Hinatsuru transcended death better than Kirito, because there is no amount of explanation you can come up with to convince me that she didn't die right then and there. Oh, Tanjiro is lightning speed, he- Bullshit. His reaction was an instant, he had to deal with Daki's belt first, then go in after some rigorous brain activity. By the time he would have arrived, Tengen's wife would have looked like a fucking noon race from Witcher. After Rengoku, I thought there would be more deaths. Not yet. Only civilians. Many civilians this time. Speaking of which, do you remember that dude who walked out, saw a guy with a sword, acknowledged it, and was like, Get off my turf, you idiot! It's like going into a dark alley at night, see a guy with a gun and tell him to fuck off because this is my neighborhood. Please don't do that. Now, about our bread and butter. Daki and Gyotaro. They weren't half bad. Plot armor was the only big complaint that I have. There is a theory I'm going to make a video on soon where we discuss demons and part of it is that demons stop maturing after they transform and they get stuck in their ways. And through that prism, it all makes sense. Daki is a teenage girl who wants attention and praise while being a complete brat and arguably dumb at times. Her brother, having few years on her, is a bit smarter, more intelligent in his actions, and he wants to protect his little sister. Their strategy is pretty cool too, much better than Enmu's. They have a plan and they stick to it. Even though I still don't get why not kill and eat demon slayers and Kunoichi's on the spot, Zenitsu should have been dead. He was of little use alive and a big threat at that. They had a backup plan, which is Gyotaro, their abilities complemented each other decently, Daki with long-range AoE with disabling capabilities, and him with short-range burst damage with poison effect. Hey, my inner geek is back. You may be asking, so what has actually happened during this arc? And I'll tell you, not a lot really. We've had 5 episodes of preparation for a 7 episode fight, and most of it was exposition, character development, and a bit of world building. 
Rengoku's storyline was finished and some sun breathing information was gathered. We saw Muzan from a few more angles and uh, finally managed to get a Kizuki blood sample. As always, our squad has barely but beautifully secured a W. Demons got their backstory, made peace with each other, and now we are ready to head back to the Butterfly Mansion to heal up and train more. Play of the game. Nevertheless, I've had a lot of fun watching it, seeing our characters grow, new ones being introduced, and most of all, a decent villain this time. Hope you've enjoyed this ride too. It was I, Machis, annoying my neighbors again. Have a great whatever time of the day you have, and you can put your hands away now. Cheers. You can argue that this birth. Fuck. You can argue that this birth. You can argue that this berserk mode.